boneless leg of lamb is one of the most underrated cuts of meat out there. And when cooked right, it's delicious, incredibly flavorful, and juicy, making it the perfect meal to serve up to your family and friends. And while there are many ways to prepare it, I'm gonna stuff this thing up with roasted garlic confit, crusted and fresh herbs. I'm gonna smoke it and then finish it off with a tasty pan sauce for one delicious lamb recipe. And we're doing it in partnership with my friends over at the American Lamb Board. Let's start off by knocking out some prep. Sound good? Let's cook. I've got a small three and a half pound genuine American boneless leg of lamb. Now this is a very versatile lean cut that can be prepared in a myriad of ways. For me, I like to roast it at low temperatures. What I'm looking for when I purchase it from the store is that it's bright pink red in color with a beautiful white fat cap around the outside. Now calling Dr. Chef Parisi in the house, what I'm going to do is remove that outside net. This is very common when purchasing it from the store or from your local butcher. Be sure not to throw it away, we'll need it later. Once the net is off, what I wanna do is transfer it to a sheet tray lined with parchment paper and with a rack on top. Now let's open up that boneless leg of lamb. Now I'm going to generously season with coarse salt, and I like to be about a foot away from what I'm seasoning to cover as much surface area as possible, ensuring every bite is absolutely delicious. Now we are doing this on both sides, and of course with cracked black pepper also. Now the reason for doing this is creating a pre-seasoned sort of dry brine so all these seasonings can penetrate this thick cut of meat, again making sure every bite is so flavorful. When we're done seasoning, let's flip it over fat cap side up, going in the refrigerator for in between 24 and 48 hours. We're going to need that amount of time for those seasonings to really get in that meat. In the meantime, we're going to make something known as garlic confit. I have two cups of garlic cloves. All we want to do is slice off that root end. Take those garlic cloves and separately one and a half cups of olive oil over to the cooktop. I next have a two quart sauce pot. We are going to add the garlic cloves and olive oil right over top. Now this is going to make way more than you need, but it stores excellently in the refrigerator covered in oil for up to two weeks. But in the meantime, we're going to turn the heat down to low and it's going to take about 45 minutes for this to completely finish cooking. You should get a nice bubble fry sort of on that oil. Also in the meantime, let's prepare some herbs. I've got several sprigs of fresh rosemary here. Now the tops are tender and the bottoms are a little bit woody. So I'd like to remove them from that bottom part and then just take off the leaves. Once they are all off, I fold them up as best I can in a little ball and finely mince. We're looking for three tablespoons total of minced fresh rosemary. Now the exact same thing with thyme. As long as the thyme is young and the stems are tender, you can absolutely use them. There's so much flavor in them, just like the tops of the rosemary. We're gonna finely mince this also, getting three tablespoons total of fresh thyme, set that to the side, and then last but not least, I need three tablespoons total of freshly minced parsley. Once it is done, we're just going to set it to the side. Now let's go back over to the garlic and have a look, starting to turn that nice golden brown color. It's floating to the top. A great way that I know when it's finished is I'm just going to take one clove out of here. You can see it's starting to be light golden brown. I place it on my cutting board and then gently press down on the spoon. If it smashes with ease, just like roasted garlic, I know I'm there. You should also taste it, make sure it has no bite. Now let's take it off the burner, transfer it to a glass jar. We're going to let it sit at room temperature until it's completely cool, which can take about an hour. Once it is cool, let's add a third cup of that roasted garlic confit oil to a separate small bowl. Add in all of our finely minced fresh herbs. Then I'm gonna add in about two or three of those roasted garlic confit cloves, season up with coarse salt and fresh cracked black pepper. I'm going to give it a quick stir to marry all of those flavors and be sure to give it a little taste. Make sure it's tasty and flavorful. If it is, good, set it to the side. Now time to prep up our smoker. I'm adding in some alder pellets here. You could use oak, pecan, mesquite, hickory, apple, or cherry. Let's turn on the smoker and set it to 225 degrees Fahrenheit. At this stage, we are gonna pull out our lamb. It looks fantastic. You can see it start to dry up a little bit. That's gonna make for a nice Maillard reaction in our smoker. What we're gonna do is flip it over. Now using a boning knife or a chef knife, I wanna make 20 to 25 one inch incisions all over. And guess what? In each incision, I'm adding in some of the roasted garlic confit cloves to each little incision. Oh, this is gonna make it so, so flavorful. I promise you, you will love this in the end. 
And you know I always say this, don't forget to have fun while cooking. If you just love garlic, slice a few more holes and put some more roasted garlic in there. It's as simple as that. Remember, you're only really limited by your own creativity. After it's stuffed up with as many garlic cloves as you want, take a third of that herb roasted garlic oil and brush it all over the inside. Then we're gonna fold it over and bring it back to the original shape. Then we're gonna bring out that net. Remember I told you not to discard it and we are gonna wrap it back up just like it was when we first purchased it from the store. Awesome. Now take the remaining half of the herb roasted garlic confit oil and brush around the outside, completely covering it and encrusting it just like this. Now we're taking this out to our smoker. We're placing it on the top rack and then what we want to do once it is on there is we're going to place a drip pan on the bottom to make sure we catch any of those delicious drippings. Be sure to do this because we'll need that a little bit later for a sauce I have coming up. Now, put a thermometer in there. We want to cook it until it reaches 100 degrees Fahrenheit internally. If you're doing this in the oven, just put it in the pan at the exact same temperatures at 225 degrees. Now, after that amount of time, we're going to come back. Let's have a look starting to look really, really good here. We're at 100 degrees Fahrenheit internally. You can see it's starting to render off some of the fat. Fantastic. We are going to crank the heat up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, if you're in the oven, turn it up to 500. No big deal. We're going to close it until it reaches 125 degrees Fahrenheit internally. Now I've probably got 20-ish, 30-ish minutes until the lamb is finished up. And because I know I'm gonna get this question of, well, what would this go well with? I think I'm gonna make my Lebanese style rice to be a perfect complement. And because, well, lamb always goes well with rice. Let me show you how easy it is to make. You will need two cups of long grain or basmati rice. I'm adding it to a colander. Then what I wanna do is rinse it very well under cold water until the water coming out of the bottom runs clear. Give it a few shakes and then simply set it to the side. Now I'm bringing over a four quart non-stick pot right over to the burner. What I'm gonna do is add in three tablespoons of olive oil over medium heat. Then I'm adding in three quarter cup of vermicelli pasta. You can also substitute with angel hair pasta, just break it up real well. Then using a spoon, we wanna saute this. Now it's only gonna cook for about three to four minutes. We wanna get it until it's golden brown like this. Do not overcook it because it can burn in a second, so keep a good eye on it. Then we're gonna add in our rinsed rice. Stir it for about one to two minutes. Get a little toast on there. Then I have three and three quarters cup of boiling hot water. We're next going to pour that right over the top. I'm going to season it up with some coarse salt. Give it a stir, mix it until it's combined. We're going to add a lid and simmer it over low heat for 15 to 18 minutes or until it's tender. Now in the meantime, it's optional, but I have a half cup of pine nuts and a nonstick skillet cooking for five to six minutes until lightly brown while frequently mixing it. Set it to the side. We're gonna come back, check out our rice. The rice is nice and tender. Now using a fork, we want to fluff the rice to sort of break it up. We're gonna let it sit uncovered for five minutes, then place the lid back on it to keep it warm. Let's go check out our smoked lamb and oh yeah, that looks fantastic. The perfect 125 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna remove that from the smoker. Don't forget to grab that drip pan of goodies. We're gonna take it out. What we want to do is let it rest for a total of 15 to 20 minutes. And now for a little chef tip. I've got a cake pan that's been in the freezer the entire time. We're going to add the drippings in there. The reason for doing this is I want to cool it and chill it completely. So going back to the freezer during this resting period it should be nice and cool. Now going back over to the cooktop, I've got a four quart sauce pot. I'm going to add in I'm going to add in one to two tablespoons of olive oil. Next, I have a half peeled small diced shallot. I'm gonna add in there over medium heat. I'm just gonna cook it for two to three minutes or until it becomes lightly browned, just like this. Now I'm going to add in a half cup of Cabernet Sauvignon. Turn the heat up to high. This is gonna make our sauce so rich and delicious. We wanna cook it down until there's just two to three tablespoons left. This is also known as au sec or almost gone. Now I'm going to add in two cups of good beef stock. While I'm at it, I'm sure there's some juices rendering from our rested lamb, and there is. I'm gonna pour that smoky deliciousness in there as well. We're gonna again cook it on high heat until there's about three quarter cup left. We should have a nice gravy-like consistency. Fantastic. At this stage, I'm going to pull out that cake pan. See, 
It's like butter, it's cold, it's perfect. We're gonna scrape all that goodness out of there and into the pan using a whisk, mix it in. This is called manto bear or mounting our butter, finishing the sauce with butter and we're gonna get a nice burn noisette flavor or toasted nut flavor from those delicious drippings. We're gonna finish with a little fresh chopped parsley, season it with salt and pepper and for sure give it a little taste. Oh my gosh. Serving up this lamb with this sauce is going to be ridiculous. And I know the conversations around the table while eating this are going to be epic because great food always makes the best memories. Let me show you how I'm gonna plate this up. For the rice, we're gonna add all of it to a plate. Then we're gonna top off with some of those toasted pine nuts, finish with a little fresh chopped parsley. Boom, good to go. And now for the lamb, the most important thing you could do is make sure you remove that butcher's twine. Then I'm gonna slice it into about a quarter inch to a half inch thick slices all the way down. You should see those roasted garlic cloves in there. Oh my gosh, I can't say it enough. The flavors in this are fantastic. And I have that beautiful medium, rare medium internal temperature. I'm gonna set it on a platter. I'm gonna add on the remaining herb roasted garlic oil sauce and then finish it on top with some of our red wine sauce and serve the rest on the side. The smells, the flavors. That's why good food just brings people around the table. Love connecting and having those great conversations with friends and family and this right here, this is gonna definitely bring some folks around. Now, if you love this, you have got to see the sauce that I braised my Greek style lamb shank in. Oh, it's to die for. I've got a great recipe video. See you on there. Yeah, that's good. Take a bowl.